Hello everybody, welcome to Level Pixel Level. And today I'm just going to show you how to do a shot where you pick up a mug and you put it down with constraints. Uh, it's a fairly common shot and something comes up a lot. So if I just play this through, I have this animation of a hand picking up a mug. At frame 19, I'd like to pick up the mug, look at the mug, and then at frame 51, I would like to put the mug back down. So I'm going to do this with a child of constraint, and I'm just going to walk through how I would set up the shot. So I'm going to go to frame 19 first, and this uh, mug itself is on its own little rig, so I can just move it around. I'm just going to key the location, the rotation, the scale, just to start. To do that, I hover on my mouse over this, and I just hit I on my keyboard. So at frame 19, I'm going to add a bone constraint. I'm going to add a child of. The target is going to be the arm, and the bone, if I just type in hand, is my hand underscore IK. Now, the mug has disappeared. It is gone. If I just go to my world view, it is all the way over here because it thinks it's always been a child of the wrist when you apply this constraint. What you need to do is click set inverse. That'll move it back to its original location before the constraint was applied. What I can do is actually key the influence. So I'm going to insert a keyframe and then I'm going to go back to frame 18 and turn this down to zero and then key it again. Now, when I scrub through at frame 19, the mug gets picked up because that child of constraint has activated. Okay, this is the tough part is having it uh, drop on the table now and be left at frame 51. So I'm going to do a couple things. At frame 50, I'm just going to key the mug. I'm going to key the location, the rotation, and the scale. I'm also going to key the influence on the child of constraint. Then I'm going to go forward one key to frame 51. Now, if I just turn down the influence now, the mug is going to go back to its original location. And I want to find this location. I could use the 3D cursor, but that doesn't always help for rotation and scale. So it can work sometimes, but I want to show you a different way. I'm going to go to Pose, Apply, Visual Transform to Pose. What that's going to do is going to take into account where the mug is in space with all the constraints lined up and change the values in the location to match that. So when I apply this, you'll see the mug shifts, but the location values in my transform also update. So the mug is over here right now, and these new values have been put in here. I'm just going to key all of those. But watch what happens when I turn the child of constraint off. When the child of constraint was on, it was almost getting a double transform because it had taken those new values and it was getting the constraint. This is where you need to turn it off. So you apply the visual transforms before you turn down the child of constraint. You'll see that as I go from frame 50 to 51, the mug stays perfectly static. And that's where I'm applying the visual transforms, turning the constraint down, and the hand leaves the mug. So it's a fairly simple shot, um, but it's something that you'll find you'll have to do a lot with constraints in Blender. And it's just a quick activity you can do to learn how the child of constraint works and how to use it effectively in a shot. I see this constraint get used incorrectly all the time, and it can cause huge headaches when you're animating because it can seem like things are broken when they're really not. Like if I come to here and just left that at one and did set inverse, it would push the mug off into space again. As you set inverse again and again, you're breaking it every single time. All you're doing is adding a new pivot point for the original location. If I'm working on a show, I might not use child of constraint all that much. I would probably use copy transforms and build a constraint tool, then use this uh, constraint. It works great for simple shots like this, but it can get complicated really quickly, especially if someone accidentally hits these buttons at the wrong time. Anyway, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. A uh, huge thank you to my patrons for supporting me and supporting this video, supporting the channel and supporting this content. Uh, it's because of you guys that I can keep making things. And if you want to check out some of the great content I'm putting up there as well, head on over to Patreon. You can see some of the advantages that patrons are getting. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.